folks, how's it going? Uh, it's me again, Jimmy Morrow down at Dreadnought Forge. Now, um, earlier on, we did a wee video, and as I'm basically in the middle of uh, attaching some handle scales onto some of my current projects here. And earlier on, um, I went through a couple of wee things I found have been useful in the past when carrying out this process. And I've got a bit, little bit further on in the process, uh, along the way, a couple more steps along the way, and I've thought of a couple more things that might be. Um, of interest, of of, 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 of of use to anybody else also carrying out this uh, this kind of work. Now, this is pretty basic stuff, but everyone's got their own process. And I've, perhaps something in here might just uh, um, might be useful to somebody out there doing the same kind of thing. Now, earlier on, um, I was working at this uh, these bow cut scales. It's a stabilized bow cut, red G10 liners in. And at that time, I was measuring out the, the pinholes using the the tang of the knife itself, using the pinholes here attached to the the scale and using that to you know drill the drill the holes. Very basic. At the, since then, a couple of these steps that I find very, very useful and important when I am doing it, um, trying to shape the, the scale as much as I can down to the outline. Of the tang that I've joined just after, like I've drilled the holes, so basically scribed in a lining where like the outline of the, the blade will be, and just basically trying to cut, take it down as much as I can at this stage to that line. That means when the scales go onto the, the steel, you can see any gaps appearing anywhere it's uneven, and you, you know it's, it's it's easier to see and to correct that at a stage where it, it can be helped. Um, the next step. Finding out uh, how far up the the, the castle of the, the blade or front of the scale will go, taking the edge down, you know, to the, the, you know almost the final thickness, not the final thickness, but quite close to it, because at this stage it's a lot easier to work at uh, with a scale on its own rather than when it's on the knife, and you, you risk, uh, you know, damaging, uh, scraping the, the like a polished blade. On the using abrasives, using files, using whatever, um, where it's a lot easier when you're just working with the, the steel material as opposed to trying to avoid scraping the front of the knife. So, taking that down close to where we want to. Before I attach the scale, I will polish that surface, this wee part here, because it's a lot easier to do it. Again, it's a lot easier to do it when you're just uh, working at the edge of the wood, not trying to avoid scratching the blade as well. Inside the liner, drill a lot. Uh, you see the, the lanyard hole and the two pin holes. Now, I drill, uh, drill these extra holes here. Now, again, this is quite basic and it's quite widely used, but just in case it's used to any of you guys. Um, basically, do this so it gives a, the epoxy I'm, go, I'm going to use to uh, to attach the scales. Um, some are to gather, some are to add uh, like a mechanical strength. Um, it's a common term like uh, epoxy pins, so it just gives it somewhere to go and gives it somewhere to uh, basically add its mechanical strength between you know bonding the two surfaces. Um, because we want a nice, nice tight fit, we put a good bit of pressure between the, the steel and the, the liner or the, the scale. And if you squeeze out too much, you're not getting as much mechanical you know adhesion as you as you want, but you don't want any gaps in there. You want a nice tight fit between steel and the liner and the scale. Now just doing that I think it, it, it gives it uh, you get the maximum uh, adhesion between, uh, with the you know bonding between the epoxy and the steel. Now uh, these wee liners are one mil thick. I like to I like to drill you know just slightly into past the the, the, the liner so I can see wood at the bottom. Basically means that the epoxy that I'm using it'll it's binding into the the wood itself, and we're not relying on the epoxy between the scale and the liner itself to keep things stuck together. The, these wee kind of like you know wee pulls are like binding the material as well. So I don't know how much that helps, but I believe it might be of benefit. Um, my next part will be let me see. I've got some brass stock, and this project I'm using pins. Now, I've bought this brass stock 
comes in well i buy 30 mil or 30 centimeter lens four millimeters stock okay quite, quite standard and an eight millimeter lander tool brass lander tool now my next step is to cut these to the right size so i cut this almost to the correct length right fair enough but that will go between the scales you know it's long enough for the scales oh, scales and the liners and also the steel now at this point the ends of the scales because when you're cutting sometimes it swells up and basically have to file it down to size and also just make sure that it's a smooth fit it'll fit within the the the, the pinholes i drilled earlier on now it's four mil stock i've used a four mil bit to drill my scales that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a smooth fit it doesn't necessarily that this four mil stock it doesn't necessarily mean it's bang on four mil it's sometimes four one four two now this is a time you know fitting up and prepping before you're you're, you're gluing up it's it, it's a it, it's a good idea to make sure everything fits like that like at this stage i cannot make you know it's not it's not a it's not it doesn't want to go in there on its own accord now discovering that now before you've got epoxy on everything and it's starting to set you know a, a bit of a nightmare so work that out now what you want is well what i find to be you know the best method is to make sure at this stage that when we're working our pins before they glue up we're getting them to the right size so it's just flush with the surface of the of this the handle material of the scale so that we're going to use clamps to keep everything clamped up and pressure on so allow the epoxy to set and not like anything like kind of like you know come away while the epoxy setting um if you have them nice and flat nice and flush with the pinholes that means you can clamp up and exert pressure right across the whole scale and keep things nice and nice and tight keep get a nice flush finish between this the, the scale and the, the steel finish off the you see here this is one that was earlier on okay i've polished up this one or i've sanded up this one nice and flat this one haven't done quite yet now you can see the round of the glue just a couple of wee jagged edges some of the drill holes this is where a granite plate comes in emery paper and it's just a matter of getting it nice and flat making sure those rough edges of the holes nice and flat um, they're taken away the glue any ridges anything that's like it's not perfectly as flat as flat as you can make it is cut down you know we want a nice flush finish between scale and steel now um, sometimes when you're working with small pins I quite they're quite fiddly they're quite hard to get hold of I find this wee tool now this one I made myself it's basically it's a copy of a, of a jewelry makers a jewelry makers bench pin now it's uh, something that I clamp onto my the bench and you see here there's a notch used for basically allows you to use a, a broaching saw or a jeweler saw uh, there's a wee notch so you can like clamp the, the hold the material down and saw it it's quite handy um, also I find there's a wee notch just cut in here and I find that it's useful for holding pins in place when I'm filing them and it, it just it just it's very short in the fingers if you're trying to do it without it but this it just gives it the surface to work against and like uh, to, to, to rest it on hope that's uh, of use to you you can buy them in jewelry suppliers but something like that there for as much as I'm using it, does the very, very best. So, that's them. Get these cut to size, get them flattened off, get them nice and flush with the pinholes, and then um, consider getting the glued up. Now, you can see here, we tip it picked up from Anthony Smith and Niels van der Berg. Instead of doing like the holes through the tang of the knife, could introduce some weaknesses in there. After all, the full tang blade is. We're choosing it because of the strength and the, the, the you can depend you know dependable the you know, strength from tip to tail all one piece of steel ground out a groove just in the tang not touching near the edges but just down the center where the again the epoxy can can gather 
Thank you very much, folks. I hope this is of use, and I'll see you soon.